and welcome to another episode of Straight Out of Camera, proudly sponsored by Fujifilm South Africa. Joining me live in studio today is Managing Director of TechSmart.co.za, Mike Hubert. Mike, how are you doing? All good, Ashley. How are you? I'm very well, Mike. So today we're chatting about cinematography. And Mike, in the last two years, there's been a lot of emphasis on video rather than stills in advertising industry. Um, you can even see it lending towards the Instagram sort of pages. What is your feeling about that? I think what happened is uh, that the video quality caught up with uh, uh, still cameras, meaning that you can now take 1080p and now also 4K. So all of a sudden, the game changed. The uh, Your cameras are usually a lot cheaper than video cameras, yeah. and then che- uh, the lenses are, ch- are much cheaper too. And you can do a lot on these uh, small little still cameras these days. So it's uh, amazing how the industry has grown from video cameras more towards uh, still cameras. You don't really see video cameras anymore in the camera stores. I mean, it's all sort of hybrid cameras where they've got best of both worlds. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, so in order to be a cinematographer, do you think there's a big understanding on on photography as a sort of stills medium in order to be a, a great cinematographer? I think it starts with composition, doesn't it? I think the fact that if you can get your composition right from the start and and know what is good composition and what isn't, it helps a lot. Certainly um, getting your lighting right, that's, uh, I suppose, step two. And then being able to move from uh, one side to the next, meaning that you can actually track a shot and, and, and be able to see where the camera is going if you're doing cinematography. Uh, I think we are going to learn a little bit more about that when uh, we talk to our guest today, Ross Maxwell, will be coming in a little bit later. Yeah, it's very interesting that you mentioned uh, lighting. We had a uh, Insta meet, um, and one of the cinematographers um, that we know within our organization came and joined us. And it was amazing how he would actually just pull his hand out just to measure the light and where he wants to actually ah. have the model standing for the image. So I think light plays a massive role. Yeah, for sure. In, in that regard. Um, I wanted to ask, in, in regards to cinematography, what are you seeing from a commercial side on sales? Meaning, um, are there loads of photographers switching over? Are they looking for cameras with 4K capabilities, for example? I think the industry is, is definitely pushing it that way. And a lot of photographers that have made the sort of leap to be able to do both disciplines are actually more successful now than ah. just a stills photographer. Um, I think that in the advertising industry, it also has changed. We had a cinematographer called um, Fasto here yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And, and his um, commercial work has indeed increased due to the fact that he could convert from, from moving image to stills image. So I think it's the other way around as well yeah yeah i know that he started as a cinematographer Mm. and moved through with exhibitions on his um uh, stills work and that was quite uh, amazing i saw a israeli war photographer using both uh, a camera or shooting uh, moving footage and then converting it um, at the same time having a little bit of a stills camera too so he takes both Mm. Um, and it's quite amazing to see his work um, from both kind of like blending everything together. Yeah, I mean, we've got a photographer called Yaku Fente who's in a band called um, Polisikar because we can't swear in this um, <laughs> podcast. And um, if you go onto their Instagram page, it's quite interesting. All the songs that they do, um, there's actually a image of someone and how he experienced the song and then behind that there's an actual movie where he's talking about his experience oh, okay, so i think I, I definitely think that video is becoming more and more apparent um, in our sort of industry brandlive.co.za have you ever thought about the power of social media social media has the power to make your business grow grow you yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za In your face, all over the place. We're online 24-7, 24-7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. Live. No doubt. Brand 
www.cloud.co.za. So our guest today is Ross Maxwell, a photographer from Johannesburg who started out in audio but moved on to video as uh, soon as he started editing. Um, so he's been in the industry for seven years, working for clients as big as Investec, Discovery, Visa and uh, Fujifilm. Ross, welcome to the podcast. Hi. <laughs> so how did you get started in cinematography? There's a little bit of a story behind that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I was studying audio. Um, actually, I started out at UJ uh, studying audiovisual communication management, um, which was the equivalent to staring at a loaf of bread every day um, as I went in. I was so bored because there was no real practical. I probably should have waited till the third year. Everybody said there was prac, but I skipped that. And then I went to the Academy of Sound Engineering um, where... Yeah, I got into audio, doing Pro Tools, um, yeah, just like really doing what I loved. Um, and then one of the like side courses was an editing course in Final Cut. Um, then I dabbled in Final Cut, it must have been for, what, half an hour. And I knew then I was like, okay, cool, I That's need it. to do, I need to do video. Mm. Uh, this is where I'm at. Um, and then, yeah, subsequently from there, went on to graduate, um, got my uh, whole operator license in Pro Tools um, and all that stuff. And then went to seek a job. I got into audio, heavily into audio in a, in like a proper studio, working for one of the best um audio engineers in the country, uh, to which I didn't really like it because I don't respond well to people telling me what to do. I'm just one of those people. Um, and then I just broke out and I was like, cool, I'm going to buy an unnamed brand camera and yeah, just go on, go and find some lenses from vintage shops and just started shooting. And I started shooting DJs because all of my mates were DJs. Um, and I did that for maybe four, three, four years. Lost a lot of weight. Shaved off many years of my life. But I learned how to shoot in really, you know, high intensity situations and just like getting this angle or the shot or um, just something that it, like, told the story of the party. And then that's how I fell into it, basically. Did you dabble in photography beforehand? I, I did. Um, a friend of mine, it's actually another story, a friend of mine, Andre Badenost. Um, Who we had on the podcast before. Yeah. Yes, uh, Andre, a fantastic photographer. Um, I saw him on another Final Cut uh, editing course when I was working um, in video rentals um, <clears throat> at the then Digital Film. Um he went on an editing course and then it was like basically a refresher course for me uh, because I'd been editing for many years then. Um, and I walked past his computer and I actually saw one of his self-portraits as his background on his computer. And I stopped, I was like, my goodness, who, who took that photo? Because it, like, it was of a quality that I'd never seen before. Um, and I just said to him, who, who, who took this? And he was like, ah, it was me, brah. And then <laughs> he said, we should have a, a meeting or whatever. Let's go for beers. Um, and then we went and just, yeah, basically became best mates. Um, that was eight years ago. You, you stole my thunder, Mike. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> what I wanted to ask you, because you I'm assuming you're an 80s baby. You're my sort of generation. Um, was there something while you were growing up that, that sort of, change your perspective or or made you more interested in photography or video like for instance something that really appealed to me was mtv was like sort of a beginning phase when we were growing mm. up so mtv played a very big part beavis and butter to me played a very <laughs> big part is there something like that that you can remember and like damn i want to go into that sort of thing uh, maybe maybe not not necessarily um, as a career but an interest an interest um i would definitely say my dad, well, I say forcing in inverted commas, I was totally on board. My mom well, wasn't, wasn't into it. <laughs> but my dad was like, you have to watch Bad Boys. Okay. Bad Boys. 
bad boys. So that changed it all up. What you're going to do yeah. <laughs> uh, when microwave comes for you. And then there were explosions and 9-11 turbos and crazy, just crazy cinematography then that I uh, obviously I didn't understand. Mm. Um, but I understood, man, it was cool. It's mm. like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the biggest Michael Bay fanboy, but that was definitely like, whoa, I'll, I'll never forget that. And then obviously like MTV music videos, just mm. Mm. crazy, tons of music videos when we were growing up and like, and especially to see the exponential curve of, of, technology and and especially um music video visual advancement mm. how quickly it went from like okay cool it's 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 some computer generated stuff to now where i don't know if you guys have seen the new spark jones uh nike uh, oh, no, oh, sorry spark jones <laughs> spark jones apple pod yeah. Yeah. advert that's probably one of the best adverts i've, I've ever seen a oh, while well, i mean for me, I'm like, oh my god! It's very, oh, um, oh my lord, <laughs> Mikael Gondry. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, and and actually, funny you mentioned that. He was a massive influence at at college for me, where everybody was like, no, we've got to be doing audio, audio. I was watching all of his stuff uh -huh. at college, just sound aspect, but I was more into the visual. You know, I was so into the visual. Mm. Um, and that was a big influence as well. I mean, yeah. You, you mentioned Michael Bain, those uh, ima amazing shots that he gets on, on, on his uh, videos, uh, or at least uh, movies. Other cinematographers, do you have piece that's uh, influence? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not really, I don't really go for specifics. I'll rather just say if I like it, I like it. Um, I can't. I mean that's why I say I don't I don't even put myself in the same group as my peers mm. even I just, I just say if it feels right and it looks good that's it. Okay, going back to the eighties, um, maybe early nineties. Um, when you were watching these MTV music or, or, or those music videos, things like the CGI at like um, Offspring's "Kids Aren't Alright," is that something that sort of intrigued you and you wanted to get into that? Yeah, it was. It, that was definitely a video I liked. Um, oh, it was. Mm, I think it was. Was it? Present? No, it wasn't. Um, but there's a lot of things. I mean, drowning, oh, cruel, um, yeah. system of a down. Yeah, they were, yeah, no, were really pushing it hard. The system of a down uh, video, chop suey was yes. yeah. That, okay, that okay. was it was pretty solid. So nice to talk to someone familiar. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a shame because I mean, you're talking about those '90s videos and uh, early 2000s, of course. The the role of um, MK. MK. Yes, yes. Um, that was major, you know, mm. just for the amount of people that came out of there um, producing these, you know, it started off perhaps slightly bad, but you could see the progress of, yeah. of, of um, South African music videos from there and, and it just kind of like d died down. I feel like it, it's it's like testament of my work that's <laughs> online. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is, yeah. is there a couple I of mean, videos that you oh did there? Oh my god. Well, well, I mean, yes for MK, but um, there's definitely, I'd just say, with the progression uh, from where I started, uh -huh. and I look at those videos, and I always go back just mm. to... Your roots. Yeah, just to make sure <laughs> that I stay grounded, um, <laughs> and I realize that I'm not actually as good as what people think that I am. Um or, or whatever. I just I always visit back there just to go. Yeah. So, so we, we chatted before you came in about light and how important light is and how much you need to know about light as, yeah. a, as a cinematographer. Um, when you were shooting these bands and DJs, obviously it was low light conditions. Is that where it sort of started for you? Exactly. Um, I shot... I was basically thrust in just after the say the bad video cameras in inverted commas were going out mm -hmm. and the new technology came in. So there were, there was a major influx in full frame digital cameras that were able to shoot video and shoot video that looked like Vista vision because you have, I mean, pretty much the exact same depth of field. Mm. You're shooting full frame 35 mole black, gorgeous depthy video and to not have shot video before and then to grow up on that i've actually had to go backwards 
and learn how to shoot on smaller sensors, learn actually how to shoot on film because it's it, it, it's a total it's a total luxury mm. if you're born into that workflow. Um, I wish I'd I wish I'd started out in film. I wish I had shot. You know, I, actually, I wish I went to film school. Uh, a lot of the time, I wish I do, just to go. Okay, cool. I know the procedures, mm. you know, and the and the stuff that actually goes on because it's a constant thing. I bump into it on every time the job gets bigger, and I work with a crew, and especially international crews. Guys are like, uh, "Who are you? Like, wh- wh- why don't you follow the rules?" <laughs> and then when they see the um. A, a, when they see the visuals, they're like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I mean, he's he's worth his salt. But, I mean, for me, I would have loved to have just, yeah, you know, actually gone to film school, <laughs> dare I say. But that's YouTube now. Yeah. You know? Oh, okay. That's course, YouTube. Yeah. No, you, Esli is uh, quite quite fond of saying that uh, he prefers YouTube to uh, actual film school. Or, um, you can literally photography learn school, every single thing about lighting if you go in on YouTube and you just... Just watch. Just go and watch behind-the-scenes videos. I mean, I learned fr- um, uh, between Andre and just watching tutorials. I learned, you know. But but you are very technically minded, and I think there's a difference between someone watching a YouTube being non-receptive yeah. and and you being receptive. Yeah. Um. And and that's also an issue. There's just people out there that that has to go to a school to learn because they don't understand or can't, can't, can't comprehend what YouTube is actually telling them. Yeah. It's quite crazy. But, I mean, that being said, uh, if you look at, <laughs> if you look at the company Red, um, mm. when Red uh, just released their, I think it was the Epic W, the new, you know, they're, they're pretty much the flagship before you got to the weapon, like the big boy that no one can afford except for Michael Bay. Um, they they did a a teaser or a preview video with that um a camera with a 17 year old Sunny. i think it was 17 or 16 that it's it's better than it's better than anything you've ever seen you know and then i'm it's like what i'm trying to say is that the bar it's people are advancing so quickly they're getting so good that if you try and compare yourself, you can't even, pff, I mean, yeah. forget about it. <laughs> but it's just amazing to see what's out there and how, how, how quickly people are learning and what people can do with the technology that there is. It's just it's mind-boggling. Okay, so I've just got myself a new, nice new camera. Uh, I want to start um, a little bit of uh, video. What's the recommendations? Buy yourself the following gear or is it like sit on YouTube or is it like learn editing or where do you go? First steps. I would, but with me, I would find something that I was passionate about. Um, whatever the, whatever the, um, uh, subject matter is, it could be interviewing your dad. Um, it could be, you know, uh, running around shooting videos in clubs. It could be whatever. And make sure that you do it till people get angry with you or people, uh, you're upsetting people by doing it. And you're doing it so hard and so passionately and so well, you know, then you're doing it correctly. That's in my opinion, that's, that's winning. Like when you're pushing it all the time because the moment you get complacent. Brandlive.co.za. Okay, so let's chat about technology because 4K is just advancing. There's a lot of um, camera suppliers um, bridging the gap between sort of video and stills a lot more. Um, what is your what, what is your prediction? What's going to happen in the next two years within the industry? Um, uh, look, I think... I think that, first of all, people's computers are going to get to a point that, well, very soon, that you're going to need quite a setup in order to edit the footage that you're getting from the newer technology cameras, first of all, straight off the bat. Um, second of all, the camera suppliers are, are advancing so quickly that now, I mean, 
whichever brand you choose, you're basically going to get something that's that's awesome. There are a few um, that are absolutely amazing. I mean, look, the straight off the top of my head, the the new Fuji camera that they just brought out, the XH1, I believe, that thing is goodness. It's 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 really nice. And and to be honest, I've gotten the best results color wise from that camera, bar none. And I've shot on many, 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 many cameras. Um, they, it's, it, it's a, I don't know, it's a double-edged sword because the, the higher the resolution and the bigger and better and more megabits a second that you get out of a digital camera, it's, it's all well and good, but you need a serious setup to edit it. And that's where people... People just think, oh, no, I'll just I'll throw a video to no, 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 no. You, you need to understand the edit process. You know, the, these are all the basic things that you will learn on YouTube, you know, that you've got to sit and do the time and do do like these online editing courses that are, you know, cheap as chips. Um, but technology wise, in terms of cameras, I think we're going to go to 8K. Um, sure. I think it will become a standard within the next I don't know, where are we, 2018? I'd say about 2022, mm. that everything's going to be at least six, if not eight. That's very interesting. So I've I've learned from um, visiting Open Window Institute mm. that Netflix is now, um, the sort of lowest requirement is 4K um, for international standard. What is the standard in South Africa? Well, I mean, what, <laughs> where do you, where do you go? K. <laughs> no K. <laughs> 640 by 480. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, like we would, we would now. I'd say our standards two K. So two K would be two hundred four eight by ten eighty. Um, true, true two K. But otherwise, like two K as it's thrown around nineteen twenty ten eighty, which is um, a full HD. Um, but that being said, um, yeah, I mean the price difference. If you just um, uh, just for instance, if you do a documentary, say if I produced a documentary, I filmed it, I did everything, edited, I delivered in in 2K to Netflix. And then I did the exact same thing. Um, I did the exact same thing and then I delivered the same project in 4K. The amount of money that they will pay you is it's literally close to four times the amount for a 4K sure. product. Um, just because of the quality and the, and and how it's 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 going to be received as a more professional, higher end product, it's ridiculous um, that that it is actually a thing. Because um, a few friends of mine they they work and, and they do stuff for Netflix, and they said like if you shoot anything and it's not in 4K and it hasn't used one of their their whitelisted cameras um, or systems, you're going to battle. You know, or, the, or they're gonna um, how do I put it in a South African way? Schnei you on the price. Mm. <laughs> you know. So there's a lot of technical jargon which I just yes. want to get rid of. Um, what is four two two? What's four two zero? What is the difference? What's four? four is there four four four? What What are we talking about? Okay, um, we would be talking about yeah. Okay, so on a standard, let's say. Your standard run of the mall, um, or, or actually even your iPhone or your Android. I'm not um, specific to either. Mm. Um, that is going to shoot for. It should be four two zero. Okay. If you've got, um, what is that? There's there's an app you can download for the iPhone that basically unlocks the sensor. Okay. That'll give you four two two at a higher. Um, a bit rate. Okay. So when I say a higher bit rate, that's the more quality, more quality, more information, more color information per channel. So it's it's RGB. So it would be four two two or four two zero. So four parts red, two parts okay, green. That's interesting. Zero parts blue or two parts blue. The higher those numbers go, when it goes four 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 or four 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 that's where you want to be that's fully uncompressed that's it's literally that comes straight off of your camera sensor onto a recorder but okay. then your eyes will cry tears with the amount of space that you need and you realize <laughs> that you shouldn't have bought this bloody camera and you should have rather gone to film school <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so if you have a camera that shoots four two zero compared to a camera that shoots four two two, but the camera with four two zero has got more uh, megabits. Yes, is that better than a four two two with lower megabits? Look, if you were delivering to any um, uh, uh, like any uh, station, say multi choice, uh, not so much SAPC, <laughs> but any any credible um, a broadcaster, if it's not four two two. Or you haven't uh, done the due diligence of taking your four two zero footage and up converted and bas- basically dithered in the two extra channels. So you're basically adding two extra channels of color that weren't there. If we want to get really technical, mm. um, and then that brings it up to a broadcast standard. Okay. Um, the nice thing about all the cameras, including the Fuji X-H- X-H1, is that out of the HDMI, you can record 422. Mm. So therefore, you're in the broadcast realm as it is. Um, and yeah, I mean, okay. that's the cool thing about all these new cameras is that, um, yeah, you know, you can actually record externally and you in a place where those cameras would have usually cost you 150 grand plus just to have the broadcast tick next to your name. Now you can get away with paying next to nothing and you can be shooting, you know, in your hand yeah. on the ground. Okay, and then 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit, what is the difference there? Um, that is the amount of color information. Okay. So you're going to have, um, a, like your 8-bit is, your, is, is basically, well, it, look, it's a, it's, 4 to 0 is basically, it's a 6-bit okay. image. Um, four plus two plus zero, but the two extra bits they made up from your other channels. So they'll basically create your blue from your red and your green. Okay. And then it, it sort of just pulls the information and kind of makes it happen um, uh, magically. An eight bit, a true eight bit is four two two, and then so on and so forth. You know, four 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 is a twelve bit, etc. 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 That's very interesting. Okay, I want to pull things back a little bit. Asking Let's come back to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Asking about, you know, if you're starting off again, you know, you said yes. passion is extremely important, but let's look at equipment. A gimbal or what would you recommend? Like hardware and then software. What editing suite should you uh, learn? Um, okay, editing suite first. I'm a fan of the Adobe Creative Cloud because you can round trip everything in there. Mm-hmm. You can do graphics you can do uh photo editing you can do um designs like an illustrator that can all round trip onto a timeline of video Uh from premiere pro so you can just open up whatever other application and just you know basically i'm gonna run from here to the corner cafe get what i need bring it back home stick it on the timeline i'm gonna then run to the butcher and grab some meat and put it on the timeline it's the same because it does contain photoshop it does uh, lightroom everything and that's a monthly subscription right so it isn't even that expensive it's 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 really cheap for for the power that you're getting it's super Mm. cheap um as for gimbal you don't really need to Mm -hmm. that much anymore because of the new cameras and they're coming out with the stabilized sensors Ah, and all that stuff um I mean, it works. It's, it's absolutely incredible. If you've got old glass that doesn't have, um, or, or you've got less expensive glass, um, or your grandfather's old Zas lenses that you should have sold to me, um, <laughs> but you kept for yourself, you greedy bugger. Um, those ones, you just throw them on those bodies and then they stabilized. Um, and then you've got this like beautiful old East German, slightly nice. radioactive glass yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah got the best color in the world ever and is ultra sharp and it's stabilized and it's lovely um as for learning i seriously just pick something that you're passionate at or or make stories about the most mundane things you possibly could mm. brushing my teeth five or five five shots yeah a brushing my teeth story okay five shots how i get to the shop five shots buying a coffee five shots i don't know walking through melville 
five shots tying my shoelaces. You know, I, I suppose it's a little bit uh, like uh, trying to write a book instead of saying, you know, let me do just one page, you know, and, and uh, let's start off with a short story first and, you know, get that done at least. And, and there's exactly. something to show. I saw um, a YouTube channel called uh, One Minute Documentaries. Mm. Really interesting, beautifully shot. You know, it, it tells a, a sweet little story and yet, bam, it's done and dusted in one minute. And I think if you can take on projects like that to start off with, awesome. You know, I mean, if you can nail the storytelling side, I mean, look, from my personal experience, I'm very flash when I come to my images. They're very like, boom, in your face. Da, da, da. But a lot of the time, I'm, le <laughs> I'm left sitting next to Andre in my edit suite going, bro, what the hell are we going to do? We forgot the shot. We were, too, <laughs> we were too amped on this other stuff. And we didn't even think about doing what we should have done in due diligence and follow a checklist, yeah. you know, or follow a shot list hmm. like, like good cinematographers <laughs> do. You know, they plan. <laughs> they don't just roll out of bed, you know. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us cool. um, in the studio, Ross. Um, follow us on SOC underscore live. We will feature some of Ross's work. Where can we find uh, oh, us yes. on Facebook and Instagram? There and, we go. Uh, Twitter we and, try and, to and, find you everywhere, okay. but you're very difficult to find. <laughs> Elusive. <laughs> um, uh, you can find me on Instagram um, at Ross. Okay, sure. Ross Maxwell lives. So that's Ross Maxwell lives with three L's after after one another. Okay. Um, and then I'm on Vimeo.com forward slash Maxwell TV for television. And that's about it, gents. <laughs> Good awesome. stuff. Back Thanks. to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Ross. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Ross. Yes, yes, guess who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za.